Welcome! In this video, I will be talking about the inner product in quantum mechanics. Now, this is an extremely, extremely important concept because inner products are literally one of the basic building blocks of the mathematical formalism that we need, not only in quantum mechanics, but beyond. And everything that comes beyond the quantum field theory, it's just absolutely fundamental. So it's extremely important that you take some time to understand what inner products are, and you know what they are used for and of course how to work with them which is very 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 important now thankfully inner products are something that is not particularly different from what we have already seen in the dot product in fact the inner product is a generalization of the dot product and it is very important that we understand how to generalize dot products because we are going to be working not only with vectors that are orthogonal, where, where we know exactly how to perform this calculation, but we will often have functions and we will want to find the inner product of certain functions. And then just thinking in terms of dot product is not going to be enough. Okay, and I just want to take a quick moment to thank my patrons uh, on Patreon, which is the link down here. Um, their support really helps me keep the channel going. So if you are interested, if you enjoy the content, maybe check it out and see if there's anything uh, you could chip in with. A anything really goes a long way into helping me make more of these videos and more frequently. So with that out of the way, um, let's continue discussing the inner product. If we have two vectors, let's say alpha and beta right there, Right. Keep in mind, this is the, the new ket notation, the bra ket notation, which is also very important. I have a video on it in case you are not familiar. I will link, leave the link in the description. So with alpha and beta, what we can do is build the dot product between them as the bra beta ket alpha. And this is now going to be, we know the properties of the brackets. So this is going to be alpha beta complex conjugate right so um, the order in which it is written does matter um, they have different meanings of course if your quantities are real then you're not going to notice any different but that's also something very important that the inner product does not necessarily have to be real like the dot product okay uh, it is positive definite so that's quite important so what i mean by that is that the inner product of a vector with itself always has to be greater or equal to zero. So that's what I mean when I say positive definite. And if we have the case where this is zero, then that means that alpha itself, right, the, the, the vector itself has to be zero. Now, another very important thing, which is, you know, uh, just kind of a, something that we often take for granted, but it is good to remind ourselves that the inner product have this property um, of distribution here. So if we have the bra alpha multiplying the sum of b times beta plus c times gamma, then we just distribute, right? So this is the same as b times the inner product of alpha and beta plus c and the inner product of alpha and gamma. So that's another very important property to consider. All right, and another very important thing a vector space with an inner product is going to be called an inner product space. So that is something that when you're first learning this, perhaps this, it kind of feels like, okay, it's just a name, who cares? But as we go deeper and deeper into more complex physics, it's going to be important to be very aware of the properties of the spaces that we're working in, right? as they become more and more abstract. So that's why it is good that we understand these concepts while the well, the situations are not that abstract, so that when we get to those abstract concepts, um, we already know how to do this. Okay, um, and then another thing that we want to consider is that since we know that the inner product of a vector with itself is always going to be positive definite, right, always greater or equal to zero, then we can define it to be the norm of a vector. So the norm of a vector a, or alpha, is going to be the square root of the inner product of alpha with itself. Or said another way, the norm squared is going to be the inner product of alpha with itself. So that's very important, right? And this is a generalization of the, of the notion of length. 
another very important concept is that a vector of norm one will be said to be normalized. And normalization in quantum mechanics is one of the most important things that we want. Since we're dealing with probabilities, we want the probabilities to be normalized. And we it's one of the main things that we have done in this channel. Um, if you're watching this, you may have already come across many videos where we normalize all sort of wave functions and well, a lot of different things. Now, if we have two vectors and their inner product is zero, then we say that those vectors are orthogonal. So basically, if alpha and beta, right, their inner product is zero, then those two vectors are orthogonal. And orthogonality is a generalization of the concept of uh, perpendicularity. When something is perpendicular, we now say it is orthogonal. And it is so incredibly important orthogonality and normality are just important and they often will go hand to hand. We are going to be interested in orthonormal um, states or, well, depends what we're going to be talking about. Um, but we often want to have uh, states in a certain system that are both normalized and also orthogonal to each other. And our basis, of course, having an orthonormal basis is going to be, you know, a very, very um, pleasant thing to work with, as we will see uh, very shortly. So if we have a set of vectors, let's say, so if we have a set of vectors, let's say that they are alpha i and alpha j, and we know that they are mutually orthogonal, then then we're going to call the set just an orthogonal set. And what I want to do here is just introduce or remind of this very important notation, right? So we are going to write this as the inner product is delta i j. So this is an orthonormal set of vectors. And what is this delta here? This is crucially important. So this delta has a value of one if i is equal to j, so basically if both vectors are the same, or zero if they are different, right? So that means if they are the same, it has a value of one, they are normalized. If they are different, it has a value of zero, they are orthogonal. So that's a very compact way to write orthonormality. And the this delta here, the Dirac delta is going to be so important and going to be used so incredibly often that if you are unfamiliar, I really recommend that you, you know, play with it a little bit and keep an eye out because you will see it very often. So now let's see just a quick, easy example of why having an orthonormal basis is so good. So if we have two vectors and they are both in an orthonormal basis, right? We take the inner product, so inner product of alpha and beta, then what we get is kind of what we're used to, right? We just multiply and add all of the components. So we would have alpha one complex conjugate times beta one plus alpha two complex conjugate times the second component of beta plus etc. all the way until the last nth component. So this is a very, very easy um, way to do it, right? There are no cross terms. There's no sort of alpha one beta two alpha to beta four, none of that, right? Every single product that is of the way alpha one, beta two, beta one, alpha two, whatever, they're all zero. So that is why having an orthonormal basis is just so incredibly good. Similarly, if we have an orthonormal basis, we can write the norm as simply, right? The inner product of alpha with itself, it gives us alpha one conjugate alpha one plus alpha conjugate alpha two, that's simply the the modulus of alpha one squared plus the modulus of alpha two squared all the way until the modulus of alpha n squared. So that is also a very easy way to write it. And something else that is very important is that if we have an orthonormal basis, we can write each component going each direction. So for example, if we have three dimensions x, y, z, then alpha i, i, one, two, three for x, y, z, we can write it as the projection of our vector alpha into each one of these directions. And this is also where we have to keep in mind that the inner product retains that meaning of the 
dot product, right? If we have the dot, the dot product of a dot b, two vectors, we said, well, how much of the certain vector is going in the direction of the other, right? We are basically seeing the projection of it. And here, this is the same. We are going to be saying, well, how much of my vector alpha is going in the direction of this unit vector x, for example? Maybe how much goes in the x direction? How much goes in the y direction? Of course, this could have any number of different meanings, but that was just an example. Now, finally, we have to keep in mind that during the dot product, we wrote the angle between the vectors as a dot b divided by the modulus of a times the modulus of b. However, since now the dot product between a and b, right, now the inner product is a complex quantity, the angle itself is not necessarily real. Okay, so that's something very important. So this doesn't generalize all that well. So what we're going to be using instead is going to be that the cosine theta is going to be the square root of inner product alpha and beta times beta and alpha. And we divide this by the modulus of alpha, right? This is uh, the modulus square, but you take the square root and beta here. So this comes from the uh, Schwarz inequality, which we will prove in one of the next videos. Um, so there we go. I hope that this was a decent introduction into what inner products are in quantum mechanics. And in the next couple of videos, I want to be solving a few problems, which will help us um, just get acquainted with working with um, just inner products and brand catch notation a little bit more. So I encourage you to go watch them. I will put the link in the description as well. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe consider checking out my Patreon. It is thanks to their support that I can keep the channel going. Um, so thank you very much. I'll see you in another video.